Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to discuss some of the wonderful attributes of some of the most underrated boas that are available. These animals are all great to work with, but they just don't get the same level of attention as some of the more popular types of boas. I'm going to get to the number one most underrated boa of all, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And so to start with, we have this guy. This is a Tarahumara mountain boa from Mexico. And so I've, I've, these have always been one of my favorite boas since I got into locality boa collecting. But for a long time, they were really kind of looked over. You know, Mexican boas in general haven't been really popular in the past. You know, they're just described in a lot of the older literature as being very dark animals that are often aggressive. But I find this very short-sighted. They're actually some of the most beautiful boas with a lot of subtle color patterns and iridescence. Looking closely at this Tarahumara boa, there's all kinds of interesting color overtones, lots of pinks and even blues and greens. And I just love the pattern as well. And so another great thing about these animals is that they're dwarfs. They're pretty much the smallest type of boa you can get. Uh, this uh, female is almost full grown and she's not quite four feet long. So, you know, great boa for someone that wants something smaller and, you know, more easy to manage. And they have great personalities as well. Some people are, have this impression that they're aggressive and they do hiss quite a bit as babies, but it's really just bluff. You know, just for show, they rarely will bite. And you can see this animal is just kind of hanging out, uh, you know, holding on firmly, but not squeezing too tight. They're one of my favorite boas to take out and admire. And so I'll, I would go to say that Mexican boas in general are really underrated and it's a great group of animals to get into if you're looking for something great to work with. Uh, right now the only Mexican boas I have are these Tarahumara mountain boas, but the uh, Sonoran desert boas as well as the Tamaulipas boas are two really interesting locality boas that you might want to look into. So Mexican boas, you know, great to have, you know, definitely a good idea if you're seriously into locality boas of adding one of these Mexican localities to your collection. So although Tarahumara mountain boas were underrated in the past, I think the popularity is really going up on these guys. Uh, you know, in the past, you know, four or five years ago, I would have litters of these and I would have difficulty selling them and it would be months and months before I was able to sell them. But lately, people have been contacting me a lot about these animals. Unfortunately, I didn't have any born in 2021, and it doesn't seem like a lot of breeders did either. So, you know, maybe the popularity of these Tarhumar mountain boas is, you know, turning around, and they're no longer going to be an underrated boa. The next type of boa on my list of underrated pet boas is another group of boas, and that is the Central American mainland locality boas. And so if you look at a lot of the books, especially the older literature on boa keeping, Central American boas are kind of glossed over and they're described as being more aggressive and less colorful than their South American counterparts. Unfortunately, this isn't really the case. Similar to the Mexican boas, they too tend to be a little bit hissier, especially as babies. And you know, maybe the colors aren't quite as bright in most of them as for example, a true red tail. But they definitely have a lot of beauty, you know, subtle beauty, different patterns and beautiful colors and iridescence, things like that. And so I actually don't have any Central American mainland boas in my collection. But if I were to add any more locality boas to my collection, there are several Central American mainland localities that are definitely high on the list. Unfortunately, I'm pretty much maxed out at this point as far as, you know, not getting any new boas. So, you know, off the top of my head, I really like the Costa Rican boas. They have this beautiful look to them. Um, the mainland Belize boas, I think, are really fascinating from a biology perspective. And this is a locality that was established by the noted, you know, Central American boa expert, Dr. Uh, Scott Boback. You know, he's known for his research on the island boas, like the Crawl Key and the Hog Island boa. But he actually established this bloodline of these uh, central or uh, uh, Belize mainland boas, and they were actually collected from a dump right outside of Belize City. And there's a National Geographic episode that's probably about 20 years old where they show him collecting the boa and you know taking it back to his hotel. It's a great you know thing to watch if you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. Uh, but these Belize mainland boas. 
you know, were brought into uh, captivity, you know, just a couple decades ago by Scott Boback. Um, a few breeders are working with them. And what's really cool is that they look quite a bit different from the Qualkey and Cocker Key boa that are descended from, you know, closely related animals. You know, since the animals uh, came from Maine and Belize and went out to these islands, you know, whenever, th you know, tens of thousands of years ago, however long ago it happened. Um, but they, they get bigger and they're a little bit thicker. Um, but it's, you know, really cool as far as the biology. Actually, I had a buddy that was getting out of boas a few years ago who had a pair of them and, you know, I wish I had picked them up, but I didn't. But there's a few breeders like Vin Russo and Chris Wolf who have these mainland Belize boas, so they're definitely worth looking out for. And then, you know, another one is, of course, the Nicaraguan boas, and I get a lot of questions about these. Nicaraguan boas have a lot of morphs, uh, including a T-positive albino that's very beautiful. It's like really glowing uh, iridescent colors on this thing. Uh, they have an annery. You can make snows and... Um, there's a lot you can do with Central American boas morph-wise if you're into the morph segment. So, you know, definitely a good animal to get into. They tend to be less expensive than, you know, the other types of boas. So Central American boas, high on my list of underrated boas. Next, I'm going to talk about a couple underrated morph boas. And so the first morph boa, really more of a group of morph boas, is any morph boa that just has one gene. So a single gene morph boa. So when people get into morphs, it seems like they always go for the multi-gene animals. You know, they want animals they can breed and pass on all those genes and combine them in lots of different ways. So I guess it's understandable from a breeding perspective. But the problem is when you combine morph genes together, it tends to dilute the uh, impact of each individual gene. And some of the more subtle genes, you really can't see. So I've seen animals that are, you know, like four or five genes together in the same animal. And you really ha almost have to take it on faith because some of the genes, the impact is so subtle in combination that you can't really see it. But when you have a single gene boa, it really shows off the beauty of that single gene. And so this is a single gene boa. This is the VPI T positive Carmel albino. And I'd have to say that my favorite single gene boa is the VPI T positive albino. You know, that's another really underrated morph, although people love this morph and it's deservedly so. Um, and so you can see this guy, just beautiful lemon yellow color, lots of like pink and almost rose highlights on his belly, beautiful orangey red tail. Um, what's great about these animals, the VPI doesn't fade with time, unlike some of the T-negative strains of albino. This guy is now uh, almost five years old, and he's just gotten better and better as he's gotten bigger. Just a really beautiful animal. And the other thing I like about a single gene morph, and specifically the VPI T-positive, is it doesn't scream it's a morph. It just looks like a really nice boa. It's just this really light you know, yellowish color. The, the pattern is, you know, similar to a normal boa. So it doesn't look like a genetic freak. It just looks like a nice, colorful boa. There's a few other morph boas that, to me, I just don't understand the point of combining them because the single gene itself is so overwhelming. You wouldn't want to dilute it with other genes. And, you know, two off the top of my head are the uh, leucocystic or, you know, super fire princess slash emperor diamond boa. So this animal is like pure white with like black eyes. Um, if you combine in other genes, the, the uh, super fire is going to override that and you're not going to even see the influence of those genes. So it doesn't make sense to combine, you know, other genes with the leucocystic boa. And the leucocystic by itself is such a striking phenotype that I, again, I don't understand why anyone would want to change that. It's just a pure white boa and that's, you know, why, why you know, mess up or you know, why try to change that? Another example are the Scoria boas. And the Scoria is a really cool looking boa. Uh, the genetics is a little uh, murky. It's been around quite a while. Um, they're still relatively rare though. Um, and it's been said to possibly have neurological issues. But the appearance of the Scoria is really striking. And any Scoria combos I've seen, I think it kind of ruins the effect, not, not completely ruins it, but it doesn't add. When you add like hypo or, you know, jungle to the score, it just doesn't, 
in my opinion anyway, it doesn't really improve on it because that single gene is so striking that I wouldn't want to, you know, mess around with that. So single gene boas, you know, good to look into. You know, I can understand if you're a breeder why you would want multi-gene boas so you could, you know, diversify the types of animals you're going to produce. But as far as a pet owner, you know, a single gene boa is definitely is good to look into. Uh, it's most likely going to be less expensive as well. So don't overlook the single gene boas in favor of the multi-gene combos. Speaking of the multi-gene combos, that brings us to our next choice on my list of underrated boas. And that's a multi-gene combo of genes which have been around a long time and they've already depreciated in value. One of my favorite examples of boas in this category are the junglo boas. And there are several ways you can make a junglo boa. Basically, you take an albino either a T negative like call or sharp strain or one of the T positive strains like the VPI and you combine it with a hypo and with a jungle. And so this is actually a call junglo. And so basically the hypo really enhances the colors of the albino and it, it, it makes the colors much brighter and they don't fade nearly as much. And then the jungle just enhances that even more as far as the cleanliness of the overall color, the color saturation. There are also effects on the pattern, you know, reduced pattern and some pattern aberrancies. But you can see the striking looks of this. This is a call uh, junglo. This animal is um, almost four years old and her colors have gotten better with time. She's a, that's this really nice, bright, you know, orangey yellow you know with the darker reddish orange saddles and so the thing about these types of genes that have been around a while is they've already depreciated and as you probably know one of the things about getting into morph boas is when the genes first come on the market they're really really expensive often over ten thousand dollars and then within a few years they precipitously drop in price as people breed the animals and the supply increases and the demand decreases and so I did actually did a video um, about the most uh, affordable morph boas so check that video out I discuss I discussed you know five genes which are really affordable and they've already depreciated in price but the thing about working with these genes is it's much lower risk because you don't have to risk losing your shirt if you don't breed a lot of boas and recoup your investment and the other thing is that these genes have actually gone up in price lately because the boa market as a whole has been going up so if you get into these uh, multi-gene boas that contain less expensive genes, it's a really good way to get involved in morph breeding without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. In fact, a lot of these animals, you know, the single gene version isn't that much more expensive than just a regular normal boa. And you can even get like a three gene animal in many cases, you know, in the, around the three to $500 range. And so you can combine the different genes together in lots of different ways, you know, have a lot of the fun and excitement of a morph project without having to take a big financial risk. So people, I know people like to talk about the, you know, the latest and greatest, you know, morph boas on the market, things like the uh, leucocystic uh, super fire boa, the scoria, or the, you know, the IMG, for example. But if you want to get into morphs and, you know, you want a safer, less expensive way, you definitely should look at these less expensive genes in combo animals like this call John Globoa. Now we get to the most underrated boa of all, in my opinion, and that is the normal common garden variety common boa, such as this one. And so these are animals that don't really have a precise locality. They don't have a morph associated with them. Often they're produced as a byproduct of a morph uh, breeding program. Often they can be mixed in locality. You know, sometimes they're mostly Colombian, if not pure Colombian, but often they'll have some Central American and maybe even true red tail boa bred in. So they're not a specific locality. Um, this is your basic pet store boa. And for beginners especially, and for even seasoned boa keepers, these are a great choice. They're very easy to keep. They're forgiving as far as the husbandry. They're typically docile and non-aggressive, and they're beautiful to look at. So great boa to start out with, or you know, great boa for a seasoned keeper. 
And so this is actually a Coupe's Pastel line of normal boa. So this animal has been selectively bred for the beautiful orangey colors. Um, some animals that aren't even from specific lines also have bright colors. Sometimes they have, you know, less bright colors, but there's a lot of diversity in what co what's called a normal boa. So if you look around, you can probably find something that you really like. And so this animal is known to be from a line that's pure Colombian, although there's not a more specific locality information. But again, a lot of them don't have a pure locality. People often will send me pictures of their normal boas and they ask me what locality I think it is or what morph I think it is. And I can't tell you because unless you have documentation of the purity and the breeding history, you can't support any kind of locality claim. All you can say is it's consistent with what appears to be a Colombian boa. But it doesn't really matter because these are pets. Okay, and the locality is now wherever you live. So if you live in Connecticut, it's a Connecticut boa. So, you know, don't get overly obsessed about locality. Another thing that people come up with when they're first getting into boas is they're convinced that their boa has some morph. It's just a normal boa, nothing wrong with that. But they know it, it must have some kind of morph and they're always asking about it on the forums and the Facebook groups. But no, most of these boas don't have a morph. You know, they might have a hidden gene, like a recessive albino gene or something, um, but they're not amorph as far as the, the phenotype or the visual appearance. But again, it doesn't matter. They're just great pet boas. Um, so yeah, the normal boa is my number one underrated boa out there. The last boa for today's video, I thought I'd pull out a bonus boa. And since we've been talking about Colombian normal boas, I thought I'd show you a locality specific Colombian boa that I feel is highly underrated. And this is a Branchia Colombia, uh, you know, common boa imperator. And I just love these animals. You know, I, I got a trio of them about uh, two years ago, year and a half ago, and they just really grown on me. This is one of the females, just a beautiful, beautiful animal. I love the, the pink and orange, you know, coloration, uh, the markings, and I love the behavior. They're kind of, they're really docile. They're great to handle. You can see the tail, beautiful, beautiful colored tail, very high contrast. You know, the thing is these aren't true red tails and people get so obsessed with true red tails that they think that a boa from Colombia that's not a red tail is somehow less desirable you know and pet stores will often call normal colombian boas colombian red tails which angers a lot of people um, but you know the boas themselves still are very beautiful and they're very desirable and so there was a time in the pet industry going back four or five decades when your pet store boa looked like this they were much closer to the original form from colombia they hadn't really been mixed together um, and you might see something like this just in a pet store. You know, now the pet store boas are likely to be more uh, heterogeneous, you know, often just produced as a byproduct of morph breeding. So they aren't necessarily pure locality. But, you know, it's great that we still have some of these pure Barranquilla Columbia boas, and there are dedicated breeders who are keeping these 100% pure, not crossing them with any morph projects. Um, and, you know, I hope to produce some of these pure Barranquilla boas in three or four years, you know, when they're ready to go. But, you know, great boa, amazing looking boa, and definitely one of my favorite locality boas, the Barranquilla Columbia boa. So that was a few of my list of underrated boas, and these are all really great choices if you're looking for something or a type of boa to work with that hasn't been, you know, really overdone and is a really good value as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video and it was helpful. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.